Okay, so uh, hello everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to present my work here. Uh, my name is Aran Blacher, um, and uh, I study the gut-brain uh, communications in health and disease. I carried out my PhD in neurobiology at uh, Tel Aviv University, and then I joined the lab of uh, Professor Eran Elinav at the Weizmann Institute, and currently I'm a senior postdoc uh, at Stanford University. And uh, throughout my journey, I'm, I'm very much interested in neuroimmune metabolic pathways, asking how do metabolism affect uh, neurological disorders. And recently, it is uh, increasingly recognized that environmental factors can impact the nervous system and dictate its pathophysiology. And today, I will share some uh, of our latest findings made at the Elinav lab uh, that published last summer uh, in nature on the gut microbiome and ALS. So the microbiome uh, gut brain axis is a complex network by which gut bacteria can affect the brain and vice versa. And they can do it in several ways. For example, by affecting immune cells uh, by which the gut is the richest niche, by direct neuronal uh, uh, innervations or by secretion of small molecules, metabolites that uh, are being absorbed into the circulation and reach the brain. And we started our study by looking at uh, a possible connection between the gut microbiome and ALS, uh, which is a fatal neurodegenerative disease in which motor neurons in the brain or spinal cord die from some unknown reason, leading to paralysis and eventually death. And some of the cases involved mutations in the enzyme superoxide dismutase 1 or SOD1, an enzyme that neutralizes free radicals in the cell, and in this uh, study, I used SOD1 transgenic mice, which are the most widely used uh, animal model for ALS. And to target the microbiome, we use germ-free mice that are uh, completely devoid of bacteria and grow in these uh, spatial isolators. We created for uh, the first time SOD1 transgenic ALS mice, which are germ-free, and monitor their disease progression. And the SOD1 mice, SOD1 mice are born healthy, but uh, around day 80, they start to develop motor symptoms and then deteriorate gradually to a complete paralysis. We started the, uh, uh, by treating them with antibiotics and monitor the motor performance throughout the disease. We did it by uh, following the mice with a battery of behavioral tests for motor functions, such as the rotor road and the grip test and also did neurological scoring. And we found uh, that antibiotics treated SOD1 mice performed significantly worse than the water treated control. And this did not affect uh, the wild types, litter mates. They also had a higher neurological scores, indicating a faster uh, progression of the disease. Uh, germ free SOD1 mice had significantly uh, enhanced mortality. And these results indicate that antibiotics or germ free uh, interventions basically exacerbate ALS in SOD1 mice. Uh, the antibiotics uh, treated SOD1 mice also had fewer motor neurons in the spinal cord assessed here by uh, histopathology, and they had higher MRI uh, T2 uh, signal in the brain areas controlling motor functions, indicating increased brain uh, atrophy and uh, neuronal death. Um, so, but, but, does this uh, gut microbiome different between wild type and SOD1 mice? This was the basic question. And to answer this, we longitudinally uh, shotgun sequence the metagenomes, uh, the entire bacterial DNA contents from wild type and SOD1 mice across the disease progression and compare the fecal microbial compositions and functions. And uh, you can see here that we found significant differences in both microbiome composition and function of SOD1 uh, mice compared with wild type controls, even before the appearance of clinical symptoms. Um, in SOD1 mice, for example, there was a marked reduction in genes and coding enzymes that participate in tryptophan metabolism, and also sub substantial alterations uh, in genes involved in uh, nicotinamide and nicotinate metabolism. And from this very detailed microbiome analysis, we were able to identify the bacterial species that significantly increase or decrease in SOD1 mice with time compared with the wild type uh, litter mates microbiomes. So we took uh, 11 bacterial candidate strains, anaerobically cultured them, and chronically uh, mono-inoculated each one of them to antibiotics pre-treated 
SOD1 and wild type mice. Then we monitor the disease progression in these animals. And uh, supplementations of these bacteria did not affect the motor functions in wild type mice. However, some of them significantly altered ALS symptoms in SOD1 mice. And I would focus on the most interesting uh, bacterium in this context, Akkermansia mucinifila, which significantly reduces in SOD1 as the disease progresses. And by treating SOD1 mice with this bacterium, Akkermansia, we were able to attenuate LS progression indicated here by the behavioral tests. Akkermansia treated SOD1 mice also had more viable motor neurons and their survival was significantly higher compared to PBS or other bacteria treated uh, SOD1 mice. So how can we, uh, can the microbiome affect ALS symptom or what is the mechanism? So we propose that the systemic influx of metabolites may, may affect motor neurons by entering the nervous system. And using metabolomics, we found that nicotinamide was significantly enriched in the serum uh, of Akkermansia treated mice. And we also detected enrichment of nicotinamide intermediates in the serum of, of these mice. And in cultures, uh, we found that Akkermansia secretes higher levels of nicotinamide into the media, and also in vivo levels of nicotinamide in the cerebrospinal fluid, the CSF, were significantly higher in both Akkermansia treated SOD1 mice and wild type mice. And you can appreciate that uh, all the genes here, uh, which take part in the nicotinamide biosynthesis, were significantly elevated in Akkermansia treated S2 uh, compared to PBS treated ALS mice uh, controls. Then we uh, continuously uh, supplemented SOD1 mice with the compound itself with nicotinamide. And you can see that a nicotinamide level were actually increased in the serum and CSF uh, of the SOD1 treated mice. And the nicotinamide treated SOD1 mice performed significantly better uh, than the vehicle treated uh, animals in both behavioral and neurological uh, motor tests. The nicotinamide treatment changed the expression levels of about 200 genes in the spinal cords of uh, SOD1 mice, correlating with the genes altered by uh, the, the Akkermansia, the bacterium treated uh, animals. The gene ontology pathways that were mostly uh, enriched after Akkermansia and nicotinamide interventions were related uh, to mitochondrial structure and function, NAD homeostasis and removal of superoxide radicals these canonical functions that are known to be uh, disrupted in the disease. And finally, we looked at uh, human ALS patients and their healthy family members sharing the same households as controls. And to this aim, we collaborated with the ALS clinic uh, in Hadassah Hospital, headed by uh, Dr. Mark Watkin. You can see here uh, that both the microbiome composition and genetic content of uh, human ALS patients is significantly different than that of healthy control family members. And notably, some of these significantly uh, reduced genes belong to the tryptophan and nicotinamide uh, metabolic pathways and were mapped to the Akkermansia genome. We also detected significantly altered me uh, serum metabolome in ALS patients, including changes in the levels of key molecules of the tryptophan nicotinamide metabolic pathways. And specifically, nicotinamide levels were significantly lower in both serum and CSF of ALS patients. And the clinical implications of, of these findings are very uh, promising, but still needs uh, future human focused uh, studies. So to summarize, I showed you that ALS mice have different microbiome composition and function compared to the wild type litter mates. And when we treat the mice with Akkermansia, we can restore the levels of nicotinamide in the serum and the CSF and ameliorate ALS symptoms. Also, uh, direct treatment with nicotinamide can improve motor functions in this model. In the CNS, in the nervous system, nicotinamide can drive the expression of genes responsible for mitochondrial biogenesis, respiration, and antioxidative uh, activities that can support uh, the motor neuron survival and prevent uh, muscular degeneration. And uh, with that, I would like to thank uh, all the members of the Elinav Lab that participated in this project. Of course, Professor Eran Elinav, uh, my mentor, uh, Mark Gottkin from uh, Hadassah Hospital, and Professor Eran Segal, all our uh, collaborators. And thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, Eran, for this great talk. 
Um, do we have any questions from our panelists or the audience? Yes. Um, I have a small question, it was a great talk. Uh, I'm wondering about the effect of, effect of SOD1. I didn't get it if it's a whole body knockout or a neuronal specific, if it's a whole body, might there be indirect effects? Because I guess SOD1 is, effect, is also expressed in the metabolic tissues, the intestine, the liver. Uh, can you say something about, about that? Uh, actually, it's a, it's a point single amino acid mutation and it's a high copy number uh, insertion of the transgene. Uh, from some reason, uh, since it was discovered in 1994, these mice actually develop ALS-like symptoms and it's, uh, it seems to be an autosomal dominant mutation, which is uh, uh, more likely to be uh, a gain of toxic function. Nobody really knows how the SOD1 mutation um, causes ALS. Uh, but it's probably due to uh, aggregation of the mutated enzyme rather than uh, the loss of uh, beneficial function of the, of the active enzyme. This is still in debate. And we see that it's actually a combination of the genetic background and the microbiome, a specific uh, uh, composition of the microbiome that drives uh, uh, this disease. Uh, it's definitely not uh, solely by the microbiome. Uh, so when we transfer uh, the microbiome of, of ALS mice into wild type mice, we cannot reproduce ALS symptoms. So it, it has to be a combination. But yes, it's a whole body uh, insertion in a, high, a very high copy number of the transgene. I have a okay. question. Yes. Yes. So. NAD, you know, has really become really so part of the nicotinamide uh, pathway. It's very high. There's a big hype right now with aging, right? Um, people are taking it as supplements, and there are lots of companies. And I was wondering if you had anything to comment about how you think maybe the gut microbiome would have, you know, an impact on that. And then the other question is if you've seen or tested in the mice, maybe mice at different ages to see you know, if that would change anything and maybe you're making the mice better in other ways, not just ALS. Yeah, so uh, there is a, a, an age dependent decline in NAD. Um, we know that uh, enzymes that cleave NAD such as uh, CD38 uh, um, express more and more uh, highly when we age, when mammals age. And that may be the cause of uh, NAD decline, which is associated with aging. NAD can do multiple uh, beneficial uh, neuroactive functions. Um, and it's actually um, through probably uh, improving mitochondrial functions. Uh, this is a very hot topic of research now. Um, in this model of ALS, we longitudinally monitor the mice for basically almost everything, metabolomics, uh, microbiome, but unfortunately they, they do not age. So it's, it's not a very good aging model, uh, but yes, uh, there are many, many um, aspects of uh, NAD uh, supplementations as, as a protective approach to cope with age-related uh, diseases. And these are some of the things that we are uh, studying in, in my current lab here at Stanford. 